everybody. Welcome to Winning Runs. I'm Charlotte Cunningham. We're here at Cloverdale, Indiana at the Crossroads Arena. I've got Bob and Marnie Loosnort with us from Hazel, Kentucky. They've been gracious enough to come down and share their knowledge with us. Marnie, who won the IPRA year-end and the rookie, she's also been a speed horse champion and she also won the speed horse pro uh, championship for two faturities, one her trailer on it ain't my first rodeo? This ain't my first mm -hmm. rodeo. Mm -hmm. And um, she's won, placed and won multiple fraternities and derbies. Um, we're glad to have her. She's a wonderful trainer. I got to meet them and get to know them in Gillette, Wyoming, because we were the only Southern people that had went there. <laughs> and I'd never been, and they had been a couple times, so they kind of helped me through. So I'm really um, glad that they could come. Bob uh, is a wonderful horseshoer. I wish he lived closer to me. Um, I have heard wonderful things about him shoeing, so he's going to go over some shoeing techniques as well as Marnie's going to go over some exercises that basically say keep it simple, forward motion, and don't get in a hurry. And so we're glad to have you all here on Winning Runs. Thank you all. Thank you. Marnie has switched horses for us today. Marnie, tell me about this horse and what we're going to kind of do with him. Uh, he's a saintly fellow, uh, working on some rollbacks with him. He needs to to snap up on the back side of his barrels. He could leave a little bit harder, so I like to do the 45 degree angle rollbacks. Uh, just kind of getting him to snap a little, little more and leave the barrels a little bit harder. Now these exercises, do you kind of do them with them as needed or do you do them every day? I'll do it. A lot of them I kind of do what I call checks and balances. You know, check if they're, they're doing their counter arcs good then I'll just do a few of those, uh, do a few rollbacks, just a, a little bit, just kind of keeping every day a little bit more interesting, make it challenging for the right. horse, I guess. And he's four too, right? Yeah, he's four. Okay, well I'll let you get started. I'm going to stand okay. over here with you and kind of ask questions about your rollback, so. I'll go ahead and uh, get him started loping to the right. Make sure he takes that left lead coming out of his turn. Speed up a little bit as I go into my turn to sit down, just like you would when you're turning a barrel. If they don't take the right leads, trot them and ask them to take it again. Kind of hustling him out of that turn too. Really sitting down, driving him forward. He's crossfire and I'll break him down to a trot again. Not letting him anticipate that turn I may lope him by the fence. So you kind of make him, what you're doing is you're going in a circle into that lead and, and going into the fence at a 45 degree angle and making them use the fence and come back. Yep. And that makes them quicker on their feet in the turns. Gets their hindquarters up under them a little more. Mm -hmm. Gets them a little bit snappier out of their turns. Do you really teach hustling. all your horses to do that? We do. Um, yeah, I'll do that rollbacks on e even older horses, you know, that have, have kind of lost a little snap or whatnot. We'll mm -hmm. just kind of freshen them up, do some rollbacks with them there. Okay. Well, it looks like he done pretty good because when he, and he would come back off that lead. Now, talk about your leads, too, on the barrels. Talk about how you think it's important you know, like you told me, to switch leads as soon as you leave a barrel. I do. I like the horses to stay on the correct leads for all three barrels. Whenever going to the second barrel, I'll make sure they get that left lead. I don't want them to change their leads as soon as they're getting ready to turn. It feels They have a tendency to drop their shoulder when they, they change their lead at the barrel. So mm -hmm. I always want them in that correct lead. That way you can keep that shoulder picked up and they're their hindquarters up underneath them whenever you get ready to turn. And you teach them this from the very start because people always ask me, now at the very start when you're starting a colt, is it important to worry about their leads? And I, I usually tell them my deal is it's not important right then until they learn the barrel pattern. So what's your philosophy on that? We, uh, I guess I'm always been a stickler about it. Okay. Uh, regardless, before we put them on the pattern, 
we'll, we'll still enforce the leads on them. Now I'm here with Marnie's second half, better half. Is that what you say? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Bob, Lou Snort, and Bob is a horseshoer. That's what I do mainly for a mm -hmm. living. He also ropes calves and team ropes, bulldogs, and you've made it to the IPRA finals as well. Mm -hmm. So you understand kind of about horses and about how they should move. And, and so you go all over and shoe horses, mainly mm -hmm. your own and other barrel racers, other anybody. I've got about a two hour radius, mm -hmm. sir. So Bob's going to give us a little demonstration about what he thinks on each individual horse, kind of what you think is important. First of all, you tell me when you first came in here, what are the two things that are most important about shoeing? Level and balance. Mm -hmm. Level and balance is, is the most important. And tell uh, me what you mean by level and balance. So level gonna... meaning when you look at the, look at the foot, the, the foot is level with the conformation of the horse. Mm -hmm. uh, this horse here, he knees out just a little bit. So whenever in, in, in his foot flight, his knee is, is, is going to bend more to the outside. Mm -hmm. So his foot's going to come to the inside okay. when he takes a step. And what happens is uh, if you level this horse up, when I pick this horse's foot up, if he'll let me do it, when I pick this horse's foot up, it's going to point more that way. Uh -huh. It's not going to be dead straight right here. Right. That's so what it's you mean. so when I level this horse up, I let that leg hang uh -huh. and let the foot hang off of the leg uh -huh. and level it according to his bone structure here. Okay. And balanced, meaning when this horse does take a step and he lands, he doesn't land on the side of his foot. Okay. He which would also be level. I mean, it has something to do with being level. But whenever the horse breaks over, he breaks straight over his frog, the point of his frog, mm -hmm. and hits flat. And hits flat. He doesn't hit like high on one side or High low. on one side, high, low on now, the other. Now is this like on every horse, the, the level part, they're going to hit? Flat. Now, and so how would a person go about looking at their horse after their horseshoe is done? Well, I mean, it's kind of the same as, as what I do. If I have a horse that I haven't shod before, 90% uh, of the time I'll watch it walk on concrete okay. or a real ha hard level surface uh -huh. and watch it if, if their back feet, for instance, when they take a step, before they pick that foot up out of that step, mm -hmm. they'll twist and then go. Uh -huh. and that tells me that that horse is unlevel somewhere in that foot. Okay. Okay. And in the front feet, when they hit the ground, they'll hit on the outside or hit on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then they'll also twist before they pick it up. And okay. if you'll watch a horse walk, if he's twisting or if he's landing on one side of the foot or the other, uh -huh. he's not level. Okay. Probably the third thing that I see, I, sh I shoe a lot at the shows. Uh -huh. um, I used to shoe a whole lot more than I do now. Mm -hmm. um, but at the shows, I'll always have my tools and tack on a lot of shoes. What I see is a lot of horse shoes shoeing horses, under, I say undershod. They don't have near enough steel under them. Too, much, too small of a shoe. Too small of a shoe, yeah. yes.